Phileas. Okay, back to work. Um, let's jump into the rendering, um, the Photoshop side of the rendering sequence. Um, so we had our rendering in Rhino. Then we pushed it out into uh, two separate JPEGs. We had the uh, alpha channel and the RGB channel. So let's start off in Photoshop, um, dun, 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 um, bringing our RGB channel in. So the um, the RGB channel is a, a basic channel, and if you if you didn't catch that, um, I just unlocked the base channel because it usually locks it right up front until you make duplicates and stuff, um, which isn't a bad practice, but I, I don't need it. Um, so we have we have our rendered building. Um, we are essentially going to have to create a, a mask for this thing, and the mask is going to remove the the background based off of that alpha channel. So let me see if I can recall how to do this properly because I always do it a little differently. But um, we want to go to channel. Actually, let's try it with this. Um, we'll do that, uh, which is a mask. Um, and then we can do um, control click, I think. Is that right? I kind of forget. Or alt click. Alt click. Um, yeah, I am. Yeah. Uh, so when you click this little button down here, right, it makes this little layer mask is what it's called. And then you alt click on the layer mask and you will bring in the alpha channel. And as long as uh, all the as long as all the resolution settings are matching, which they should be because you made them in the same at the same time, um, you can just bring the alpha channel right in and drop it right in here. Oh, I think we have to copy and paste it first. So copy it and then alt click on the alpha channel and then paste it. There you go. Um, so once you've done that, I'm going to turn the extra layer off and we're looking back at the, the main layer and what you'll see is this, which is essentially the rendering that I did for my building. Um, the difference is there are certain layers to it that and it didn't looks like it didn't really render properly because it just erased all the glazing that went to the background. But anyway, that's a different thing. But uh, so once you get to this point and you have uh, the background pulled the background pulled out, you can bring in like a sky background or something like that with Photoshop. So um, doing a dangerous game here. I'm Googling something on screen. Um, let's look for um, sky background. And um, the, the, the important thing when you're looking up like backgrounds to put in a Photoshop image is to get the tone, the tonal quality of the image to match the tonal quality of your rendering. And that's really important because like this is kind of a, a stark color palette. And so if I use something that's profoundly warm, it won't really work very well. So let's try and find something that's like very warm like this. Um, if I were to put this in the background, it may or may not look that great. So let me copy this and um, go into Photoshop again. And uh, here I'm going to have to um, paste it in, but drop it in the back of my image. Um, so let me reduce the size of this a little bit. So. I mean, Photoshop-wise, this is kind of not exactly correct because it, it the perspective isn't really right. And in fact, what's that? Yeah, but like really, really the horizon for this thing is more like up here, and all that sh you should see some of the background horizon in the in the bottom there. But I'm stretching it just for argument's sake. But um, but like right now, what you see is like is like yeah, we have this really warm. Um, you know, background, but the sun is behind the buildings and the shadows are coming from the other direction. Um, so it doesn't make sense. So you visually pick up on that, but not even, not even that, but like just the tonal quality of, of the image, you would more, you would more have to like change the, the color. So you could go to like hue saturation or something like that and sort of colorize it a little bit and then just try to give it like a warmer sort of tone so that it fits the color palette of, of, the, uh, of the, the background image or something like that. You know, I, I did that really as a quick 
very, very quick one-off. But you, you don't generally want to have to Photoshop anything if you can avoid it. You want the rendering to do as much as you can um, up front. Okay. So, and the yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's something like that, um, but we'll figure. It, I mean, we can figure it out later. It, Rhino Render isn't really great at glass, um, and it could just have something to do with the thickness. I mean, what you will notice is that it's there. Uh, it's just down here, it's reflecting a lot more blue, and I don't really know why it's reflecting that much blue down the bottom. But you can see the edge of the glass right here. Um, it's right across. Uh, well, like right there. See that. Um, okay, so that's <coughs> one thing um, is like what not to do, but I do want to also show you what to do. Um, so you want to pick one that doesn't have the sun, you know, in a location that doesn't make sense. Like the sun should not be behind the buildings in that case. It may um, just be a, a general sky, kind of like this. Um, or if you want something that's kind of dusk-like, uh, but doesn't have the sun in the image, you could use something like that. But again, the dusk tonality won't really work that well on it. Um, I tend to like to keep it really simple and just stick with something like this, which is just a basic sky. But you got to make sure that you pick something that matches the perspective, because right now this is almost looking like straight up at clouds instead of seeing like the, the horizon of clouds. Um, so maybe something more like this is a little more appropriate. So uh, the resolution on this one kind of sucks, but I'm going to drop it in there anyway. Um, here, pre-transform it, and these, you know, with clouds and stuff, you can sort of stretch them. They don't have to be like their exact native um, orientation, but like in my mind, that looks a little better, you know, just because it's like stark. Um, if you really wanted to change something about it, you could change um, the saturation and just kind of pull some of the saturation out of it. Kind of gives it more of like a uh, kind of like a sepia sort of background look to it, and uh, well, actually on the screen it didn't change much, but on this screen it did, it kind of did. But uh, anyway, so that's like Rhino Basics. I don't need you guys to go much further than this unless you um, want to or have to, right? So you got to be very careful about camera placement because this area right here is a problem, right? You don't want to have this like empty nothingness looking out into the horizon. You always want to avoid that if at all possible. Okay. Um, what questions do you have? Pretty good basic introduction to Rhino Render, right? All right.